Good morning and welcome to worship this Sunday, Christmas Eve morning, albeit virtually. Uh, for this Advent 4 service, it is a condensed service that we hope will uh, prepare you for what we are getting ready to hear this evening uh, at 4 o'clock with our family service or 9 o'clock, the more traditional uh, candle one. And we hope you can join us for those. So with that being said, let us prepare our hearts as we continue worship for this fourth Sunday of Advent. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with your spirit. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God says in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel. 
from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle wherever I have moved around among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel when I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make, you, make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more. As formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Romans chapter 16. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed. And through the prophetic, prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of, of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? Since I am a virgin, the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. It is an answer that I give all too often. It is when you are asked the question with two options, and both of them are sort of right. So instead of saying one or the other, you end up going with the answer, yes. For example, 
for myself when I get asked the question, where am I from? That is a question that my answer completely depends on what one is thinking that question means. So if someone were to ask me, are you from Florida or somewhere else? My answer is usually yes. I was born in Syracuse, New York. However, I grew up in Florida after moving here when I was little. So it is a little bit of both. This mor morning, for the last Sunday of Advent, I found myself thinking about this type of answer when I was reflecting on the Gospel reading. The one that we just heard, as well as the popular song that often goes with it. This morning we hear in Luke's Gospel the story of the angel Gabriel appearing to Mary and telling her that she will conceive and bear a son and will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. A story that many of us have heard time and time again and know all too And as I sat and reflected on this story, this story of Mary's faith and hearing what God was up to, I could not help but think of the well-known song that we often hear this time of year, Mary, Did You Know? The song goes as we hear, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? It is a song that I am sure many of us are familiar with. And there are many, many beautiful versions of it. But it always seems to open the door for the question of, well, did she know? I have heard some present the argument that we looked at our reading this morning, and yes, Mary did know. She knew that Jesus was the Son of God, Gabriel clearly told her. However, I've heard the other side, that there is no way she fully knew or understood everything that she was being told by the angel in our reading this day. So as I thought of this song and looked at our gospel, I find myself sitting in that answer of yes and no. Yes, Mary was told by the angel Gabriel what this all meant and who Jesus was going to be. However, do we ever hear that Mary fully understood what that meant? No. That is the beauty and the maddening part of our gospel reading this morning. The author leaves out so many details. We want to know what Mary thought she was thinking, what exactly she was thinking, how it all happened, but we only get so much of it all. We hear the angel call Mary the favored one. She is favored by being told something that could potentially see her stoned to death or ostracized. 
having a child before being married. On top of this, we hear Mary's perplexities with all she is being told. Question of how can this possibly be? Often we hear this story as Mary just immediately accepting and diving into what she was being told. And just immediately responding, yes. However, I don't know about you, but I find it hard to believe that there wasn't at least a pause before her acceptance. That moment of accepting, refusing, and then accepting again. A time of waffling back and forth, a moment that all of us can relate to. We are faced with big decisions. And then right as Mary comes to that place of yes, then as we hear the angel departs. Theologian Debbie Thomas, she points to this moment in her writing. She writes, and I quote, then the angel departed from her. It was a gap in my life with God that I both recognize and dread. It's the moment when the prayer ends, the vision recedes, the certainty wavers. It's the moment after the yes. The moment when the mountaintop experience fades into memory and life in the valley begins. How different Mary's experience might have been if Gabriel had stuck around to erase her doubts and silence her critics. But no. He departed, leaving the ongoing work of discernment and discipleship to Mary alone. Her yes didn't signal the end of mystery. Mystery had only begun. We have no way of knowing what Mary knew. My guess is that, it, like us, she knew just enough to get started. My guess is that the work of bearing God into the world involves ceaseless discovery and ongoing consent, just as it does today. My guess is that each trembling yes Mary whispered into God's heart changed as does ours. End quote. So Mary, did you know? As Dr. Thomas wrote, we have no way of truly knowing everything that she thought and knew. However, this day we hear Mary's acceptance of what God was telling her. Pause or no pause, we hear this story of Mary sitting in that place of maybe not fully understanding what God was up to, but answering back, yes. No matter how many times she may have gone back and forth in, our, in her head, she finally answered, yes. So if Mary knew exactly what all of this meant, did she know everything Jesus was going to do and what it, was all, what, what, what it would all look like? I doubt it. But as Dr. Thomas lifted up, she knew just enough to get started. And so this Sunday morning, this fourth Sunday of Advent, as we look forward to hearing that good news of Christ's birth once again, we go out and we do the same knowing just enough to get started. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Now let us confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all 
that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. with prayer. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who wait God's day of restoration. You promised mercy to Abraham and Sarah and their descendants forever. Bring your church into thoughtful, caring, and collaborative relationship with those of other faiths. Strengthen our shared values that we work together in caring for our world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As fields and crops lie dormant, bless them with holy rest. Prepare them to thrive that they provide abundant food in due season. Protect animals who hibernate and provide for all who scavenge for food in the lean season. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise up the lowly and cast down the arrogant. Teach humility to all in positions of authority. Break down systems of oppression, especially systems that perpetuate inequity and exclusion. Do not allow wealth, power, or pride to become idols that obscure your call to justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Look with favor upon all who cry out to you. Accompany with tenderness all who are afraid or ill, especially all those in the sanctuaries of our hearts this day. Rescue all who experience abuse or who live under threat of violence especially refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers in search of a safe and stable home. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are pleased to make your home among us. Make our homecomings joyful as we gather with friends, family, and chosen families in celebration. Grant safety to all who travel, sustain the work of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services and other ministries that assist in setting up new homes. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Blessed are you for Mary and all your servants in every generation who lived according to your promise of mercy. Strengthen us by their example until the revelation of your glory is made known. Merciful God, receive. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Now let us join together and pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. (laughs) 
May the God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Keep awake. And thanks be to God.